Good morning. So, this little video is to show my station running some FT4 and FT8 contacts, hopefully, uh, on HF. Uh, I'm lucky to have two PCs. This one, which is linked to the ICOM 7300. I've got this one, which is linked to the ICOM 910. So this side covers VHF and UHF, and this side covers HF to 6 meters. So, basically you want to run some FT8 and FT4. Now, there's misconception with FT8 and FT4 that it's a low power mode. It's not a low power mode, it's a low signal mode. So it gives people like myself the opportunity to work different DX with uh, average antennas and average power. So the antenna I use uh, is a long wire for HF, which covers right the way through from top bands to six meters. Uh, and for VHF, UHF, I've got a horizontal dipole, and I've also got a vertical, which covers two meters, 70 cents and six meters. And that's basically it. Uh, I've got a couple of antennas in the loft which are receiving antennas. One does me IC R8500. That's the 20 meter delta loop. And I've also got an X50, which is plugged into a little scanner, uh, which does VHF, UHF. Anyway, I'm gonna run uh, my system up on both computers because they're both linked together. So basically, I run logger 32 on this machine. Uh, it's linked through to JTDX, which is on here. And I'll do the same with this machine. So that's booting up now. So that's basically booting up the VHF and UHF side. And this side is HF. So, at the moment, if I log on this machine, any contacts, it corresponds with this machine, so I'm parallel logging. So, I can make contacts around the machine and it keeps the log database up to date. So, if I just see what's up. DX is going, it should populate. So it tells me at the moment these are the stations I can hear on 12 meters, which is on here, which are those tones. This is on FT8. So all these stations here are all the ones I can see on 12 meters at the moment. And corresponding on this side, these are the stations I can hear on two meters, which is on 144, 174. Right, so the first thing you need to do on when you run FT8 or FT4, you need to make sure that your clock is running pretty much perfect and synchronized. So I run a program called Dimension 4. Now I run this on both machines, that one and that one, because to have any sort of contact on FT8 or FT4, your clock has to be synchronized. So make sure that you, you run some sort of synchronization program on your computer while you run an FT4 or FT8 uh, just to make sure that the contacts are sequenced together you'll understand what I mean in a minute so that runs in the background all the time so make sure your sound card settings 
are set up to your program, which means when you transmit and when you receive, you're receiving signals. So, on your waterfall, these are the details that you have. So, all these stations are what's getting decoded and who's talking to who at the moment. So, every 15 seconds, it will decode a set of data and the information will be shown up on here. So that's the waterfall at the top. That tells you which part of the band is getting used. So what you really need to do is where your red line is is where you're going to transmit. So using the waterfall properly, if you look for a stream that no one else is using, so I'd say here somewhere, you right click on that, where the red bar is, is where you're going to transmit. So, I'll be transmitting, I'll make sure I'm not transmitting over everybody, anyone else. I also have the TX split highlighted, so I'm locking the frequency I'll be transmitting on. So, when I transmit, it makes sure that it's not jumping around frequency, it stays on this clear piece of the data stream so anyone who wants to contact I can contact anyone else on the stream but my transmit stream will always be where that red box is that saves jumping around frequencies so I'll put a, a quick call up now so all I do is click enable or before I do that just make sure see someone's populated that stream now so I go over here and now if I click enable TX, what will happen is that will now call CQ. So it sent the radio into transmit. The red line at the bottom is moving across for 15 seconds. And you'll notice it comes up calling CQ on the right hand side. Now hopefully if someone comes back to me what should happen is it's calling CQ again if someone comes back to me what should happen is it should come back with someone returning my CQ call and it'll populate on this side and it'll tell me who's coming back and what they can receive me on what I'd also suggest is there's a program called PSK Reporter. So while that's calling CQ, if I run uh, PSK Reporter up, which is that program there, and click on that, it gives me a map of the world. And you put in what frequency you're calling on, which is 12 meters there and click on go that will give me a list of all the stations at the moment who can hear my signal so uh, for instance it gives you a list and when's the last time they heard so while that's happening, my system is still calling CQ. No one's answered yet, unfortunately. So what I might do is give it one more chance and I'll give someone a call and see if I can make a contact. So I'll halt the transmit for the time being. Unless someone comes back to me. Right, so no one's come back to me. So we'll see now who's calling CQ. And we'll give someone a call. So we double click on this United Tango 5 ULB. 
it's sending out a call to the Ukraine station. Hopefully he comes back. You'll see on this waterfall, I'm transmitting on a clear data stream. If he comes back, he's caught. He's speaking to a Switzerland station, so I'll leave it to transmit. And in the meantime, me two meter side is decoding as well. So my call still going out to Ukraine station. So it populates the bottom part in JTDX. It's still transmitting and on this side you can see see my signal still getting heard pretty much okay. So he's come back with a minus 13 and you'll see a little box just popped up then. So what's happened is on my logger now it's automatically logged that station and gone through. It will send a 73 over which it has done. I should ret he should return a 73 back to me which he has done, which means the QSO is complete and my station then goes back into CQ mode so that's basically FT8 uh, FT4 is very similar except it's twice as quick so, just make sure no one comes back to me hold me TX So I click on FT4, you'll notice it changed the frequency on the radio to the FT4 frequency and you'll notice the data stream has gone twice as wide. So again, I'll click on a clear data stream, clear spot, which is say there, wait for someone to call. I'll give RL2F a call, see if you can hear me. So my data stream stays, the transmit stream stays where it is and the receiver has gone to the frequency he's transmitting on. He's come back really quickly. So this takes just over seven seconds per QSO on FT4. Uh, and um, the seven threes have gone through, the reports have gone through, it's been logged on the login program. And it's gone back to calling CQ on FT4. So the data stream still clear. So it's an ideal situation for how you use the waterfall. Just make sure you're not transmitting over anybody else. Uh, the difference in tone is FT8 and FT4. So that's FT4. So that lasts seven seconds. As you can hear. So if we go back to FT8 which is this one here, FT8, you know, the frequency changes and the tones change. And it's a lot longer, the stream. So basically FT8 is a 15 second transmit, 15 second receive, and FT4 
is a seven second transmit and seven second receive. That's basically it. I'm lucky because Paul G0WRE helped me out a hell of a lot with this program. The, the logon program is called Logger32. Uh, it automatically sends all my QSOs to Logbook of the World and EQSL. So there's no intervention needed by myself. That's done with a program called LogSync, which is this one here. That's LogSync, and that runs in the background all the time. And that every time I have a QSO, basically that uploads my QSO to EQSL and to Logbook of the World. Uh, like I say, I keep PSK reporting running in the background. That tells me that my signal's getting out. So if, you, if you're struggling with your signal and you think you're, you're sending CQs out and you're not getting any reports back, if you run PSK Reporter on the band that you're on, at least you know if you're getting heard by other stations, there's nothing wrong with your station. It may be just because people are deciding to call or speak to somebody else. You can, you can sit there for, for ages calling CQ and no one will come back to you and you think you've got an issue with your station, and you haven't. It's just just that people sometimes decide they'll, you know, they, they'll double click on someone else or want to speak to someone else and there's too many G stations around or whatever. So that's basically it. FT8 and FT4 is really uh, Marmite. Some people love it, some people hate it. I love it, I think it's great ideal for me for my small setup my antenna is pretty much compromised uh, it's a long wire it's about 150 foot long with a 9 to 1 on on it and it runs down from the antenna to the back garden across the back garden and back up to the house so it's in a big U shape so it's not the best in the world but as you can see it's still transmitting uh, and it's still getting received by North America, South America, uh, off the coast of Africa, and all over Asia. So it's still working, and even though I could be calling CQ, I might not be getting any replies, at least I know, through PSK Reporter, that my signal's getting out there. So that's basically it. That's a quick rundown of FT4 and FT8. If you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, like I say, I'm lucky to have a couple of good friends, especially Paul, G0WRE, who's helped me set the system up uh, so the parallel logging does work. So every, as you can see on this log, the last two stations I spoke to on the other machine have come through onto this one, so it keeps all the logs in order. Uh, and that's basically it. It's great because you, if you're in a, a situation where you haven't got a lot of power or your antenna's not very good, uh, you can still make some nice contacts. Also as well, it's ideal for early morning or late evening because you don't have to have any audio at all to make the contacts. You just turn your volume down on your radio and let the sound card do all the work on the computer so you can still play HF, you can still play VHF and not disturb any of your family. Hope that's been of some information to you, some help. Uh, like I say, I, most of my contacts now are on FT8 or FT4 just because the antenna is really not good enough to do the, the pile ups on SSB. Although I still now and again, I still use the microphone now and again. But uh, yeah, that's it. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Any more questions or comments, leave them below. And uh, I look forward to doing the next video. Bye-bye for now.